Today, we're going to discuss how to choose between hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. For those who tune for the first time, I'm Dr. Francisco. I am a specialist nephrologist and a transplant immunologist working at Francisco Kidney Medical Center in Singapore. This is the bite-sized information for kidney and related diseases. This video blog is destined to help patients or their relatives to have more information, to be better informed, so they can manage the disease better together with their doctor or with me if they choose me, so they can have many uh, less worries and complications. So I hope you find this useful. As I mentioned, today we're going to discuss how to choose between hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Choosing between hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis can be a difficult decision. And there are many factors to consider, ranging from medical aspects to personal uh, preference and particular lifestyles. But do not forget at all that if you are eligible for kidney transplantation, probably you should consider it over hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. There are patients who, have, might, who might have medical contraindications for any of these therapies, and doctors might recommend one therapy over the other. But most patients do have a choice. Overall, in Francisco Kenya Medical Center, we advise our patients to choose the therapy for which they feel more comfortable with and which blends better to affect less their lifestyle and the one that suits better their personality. Oh, hello, Hassan Tukin. This might not be a, a very simple decision. I appreciate that without experiencing any of those, those therapies, without you know, testing them. But many decisions in life are like that. You just need to use all the available informations, all the available elements, and weigh them up. And then take a leap of faith. Just try to visualize how your personal, family, social, student, leisure, sports, and work life would look like or be affected after one or the other therapy. I mean, imagine your life if you were to go for hemodialysis, and then imagine your life if you were to go for peritoneal dialysis and, you know, weigh them up. Then, we as doctors can help you, giving you more information, and help you with this weighing up of these two options. So you can tune up your decision reaffirm it or dismiss it. But in short, both therapies are equally good to clean the blood. That does not mean that they are as good as kidney transplant or as good as your kidneys your, when they work or normal kidneys, but their efficiency in cleaning the blood in the long run is comparable. Some doctors claim that peritoneal dialysis gives you more independence, but that is relative. If independence for you means do it by yourself and at home, the answer is then yes. But for some patients, that is a big chore, doing it every day without rest days, in particular, if done manually several times a day. And for these patients, that is not independence. The same for hemodialysis. For some patients, hemodialysis gives them independence. As they do the therapy three times a week, then they can rest from the therapy on the days free of hemodialysis. That means four times a week. For others, hemodialysis is seen as taking their independence, as they need to go through it three days of the week, meaning almost every other day, and need to plan and modify their lives around it. So they feel like hemodialysis is governing their life. So that is not independence for them. As everything in life, this is relative. And as I mentioned, it depends on every individual's particular preferences, priorities in life, and personality. Some people feel better choosing hemodialysis as it is performed by professionals, and they do not need to worry about doing it by themselves, while others 
feel better choosing peritoneal dialysis as they feel empowered by doing it by themselves. And they do not need to blame anyone else if something goes wrong, rather than being too dependent on someone else taking all the necessary precautions. Some people believe hemodialysis permits more interactions with, with fellow patients suffering the same condition and living with similar challenges. And feel the hemodialysis centers provide peer support, while others believe that peritoneal dialysis is more permissive of family life as it is performed at home. Some patients might be performing peritoneal dialysis and still enjoying a good book at home or have the opportunity of watching their grandchildren or to take care of chores at home. But peritoneal dialysis will require some home arrangements. Being sure there is enough space to store the solutions or to park the peritoneal dialysis machine if they're using one. Something not necessary for hemodialysis, especially if having limited space or not wanting to disturb the aesthetics of your home. Regarding diet, there are also differences in hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Fluid and salt restriction and a more frugal diet are pivotal for both. The first one, to prevent all the negative consequences of fluid overload, including breathlessness and higher heart risks. The second, to prevent a faster buildup of some toxins and toxic electrolytes if they become too high in the blood, like the potassium. But it is the general belief and consensus that these restrictions are higher in hemodialysis because it's intermittent nature. Hemodialysis is performed only three times a week over a period of four hours per session. We're talking about the average patient. And that is the only time that the blood is cleaned and the excess of fluid is removed. In between dialysis sessions, the toxins and fluid just start building up once the dialysis stops, until the next dialysis. To put this into perspective, you can dialyze in a standard conventional prescription 12 hours a week, when the week actually has 168 hours. The rest of the hours, 156, toxins build up continuously and fluid accumulates also continuously because you keep uh, drinking water or any other fluid. Both issues are not ideal. But with certain diet restrictions, fluid and toxins accumulation, and importantly, their negative effects on your health and well being can be minimized. For instance, chronic or acute fluid retention impacts not only the quality of life of patients, but contributes to heart complications and others, including a higher risk of dying even of an acute episode of fluid overload with acute heart failure, or are associated with shortened lifespan with chronic heart failure. I do feel for my patients on these restrictions. I even carry a bottle of water. You always see me with a bottle of water. Water is indeed the vital fluid, but in patients with kidney problems, they cannot handle the water very well. So on the contrary, water can become very toxic. So, I understand it must be very hard for them, but fluid restriction is one of the ways to ensure a less complicated and longer life. So I encourage you to put that in a balance. Seeing it from that perspective, it might motivate you to attach as best as you can to the recommended restrictions. On the contrary, most patients on peritoneal dialysis can have a less stringent fluid restriction 
because the therapy is done continuously every day with constant fluid removal, but still being frugal, water and salt intake is ideal. Some patients take this statement as they can eat and drink anything in whatever way and amount. However, even healthy people need to have a balanced nutrition and modern diet. Even more people who are unfortunately ill. So even you are undergoing peritoneal dialysis, you still need to control your diet and fluid. If any doubt, consult your own doctor or consult me. Most hemodialysis is performed in a dialysis center and not at home. So people need to commute to dialysis centers. Occasionally, dialysis centers might be not very accessible or access friendly, which is important to consider as many patients are elderly or have mobility issues. Also, they might need special transport and special transport can be very expensive. On the other hand, peritoneal dialysis is performed at home with no need to commute. In addition, for busy patients, commuting becomes a big chore. If using peritoneal dialysis, the quality of the vision and the degree of dexterity of the patients needs to be considered as it involves precise connection of tubes, avoiding the need to a, of accidental contamination by touching with the fingers or other objects the external ends of the tubes. So you need to have certain dexterity to connect the tubes properly. If you do this by accident, you touch other parts that are contaminated, you can have an infection. So you need to have dexterity and you need to have good vision if you consider peritoneal dialysis. But this indeed, if you don't have that, and you still choose peritoneal dialysis, this can be circumvented with the help of a caregiver, which can be a relative or someone paid for that service, like a nurse. But this imposes on the caregiver with such responsibility. But as I mentioned before, some people would prefer to do it themselves. And some people would prefer to do it so be the caregivers for the loved ones who are ill, so it is fine, rather than uh, be done by a third party. But still, irrespective of how much love and attention you can have, can be very imposing. Caregiver stress and burnt out is a reality in the care of many patients with kidney failure, especially if undergoing dialysis especially if they are not that healthy and have many complications, visit the hospital frequently, etc. I will not discuss in this session that in detail, but you need to consider that too. Again, everything in life is relative. Yeah? Hemodialysis, on the contrary, it is typically performed by a nurse on behalf of the patient. In modalities overall, it is more expensive than peritoneal dialysis as well for both the patient and their healthcare system. But this greatly depends on insurance policies, benefits, etc. I can discuss that later in another session. Regarding work life, hemodialysis seems to be more disturbing for working schedules as a break of half a day at least sometimes even more, needs to be taken to perform the therapy. Imagine commuting to the center, preparation, or so maybe waiting in the, you know, in the waiting area in the center before you are start being prepared, then connected to the machine. The therapy lasts four hours, then on wind, rest, then go back home, and then three times a week. Some people find this very challenging, especially having a full-time job and one 
that requires strength or concentration. As many people feel drained after dialysis. Besides, this brings important worries to patients that are working, that are employed, fearing they cannot perform the job at their best or fear to be sacked. This is a reality. Many employers are not that flexible or that kind to facilitate the patient still work for the company with modified duties or schedules. But many are, and hopefully the ones dragged behind can catch up and support more you know, people who have these sort of diseases that want to live a productive life despite their disease, a life as close as normal. Self-employed patients might not have this problem. Patients with peritoneal dialysis might have not these issues, especially if they choose automated therapy, which is performed at night, but also depends on what are the work duties. But again, some patients said they cannot get a good sleep while connected in the machine overnight, especially if the machine requires attention. So, in the textbook, everything might look ideal, but in practice might not be. So there are things that you need to consider, and sometimes you just need to experience them yourself. But that's why uh, we as professionals can give you as many elements, as much intel as we can, so you can take the best decision. Patients performing manual peritoneal dialysis during daytime might have some challenges as well. Indeed, many patients don't work either being retired because, you know, kidney failure is indeed a disease of the aged, or maybe they are too weak already. So uh, not being able to work because they are retired or they are unable to work doesn't matter to them. But I have observed in my, you know, practice that many patients do not work either because they are retrenched by their employer, which is very sad, but many times because they are self-defeated. They decide not to work after developing kidney failure. They believe that everything is gone. I can understand it's a big blow for them, but with the right support, Patients can get on top of the disease or in the other way. And that's what we focus in my center. It can be very devastating for the morale of patients, but this can be overcome with an empathetic and kind support. And on the contrary, I believe that going back to work, it will boost the morale of many patients. They it will give them a sense of fulfillment and contribution, which is also important. I always encourage my patients to try to remain professionally active. What is more, dialysis is too expensive. So working is a way to balance their expenses better. Practicing sports might be more permissive in hemodialysis. But this has to be assessed case to case basis, both considering the stamina and overall health of the patients and the physical effort required for that particular sport. They might need to adjust to play the sports in a less demanding way, less competitive. On the other hand, because on peritoneal analysis you have a plastic catheter piercing your tummy all the time. Contact sports are probably not ideal. To avoid accidental pulling and dislodgement of the catheter. Similarly, swimming is not recommended to prevent water entering the exit side of the catheter, causing uh, an infection. Travel might be more cumbersome for some people undergoing hemodialysis. Not so much because they cannot find a hemodialysis center overseas to dialyze, 
but they will be worried if they will be a higher risk of catching hepatitis or HIV overseas. The quality of dialysis centers is increasing around the world. You just need to do your search for a trustable one. One significant problem when traveling is that sometimes patients miss some dialysis sessions when on holiday to prevent that infection risk. So they prefer to miss the dialysis rather than go to a dialysis center over there. And sometimes to save money as dialysis is more expensive overseas. But I actually advise my patients against this. It is risky missing dialysis sessions. And certainly, if you will become ill for doing that, you won't like to become ill in an unfamiliar environment. On the contrary, it's better to have optimal Maldialysis when you are overseas, so you can enjoy better, you know, your holiday or your business trip, especially that you might be eating different food. And if you're in a holiday mood, you might be eating more. So, on the contrary, you need to have your dialysis, not to miss them. I have, you know, some patients have had problems overseas, some have not made it, some have to be transported in an air ambulance so just for not uh, arranging that we help you you know we don't help you with any center over there but i will help you advising you to consider all those factors when you travel so on the other hand you know uh, in respect uh, to peripheral dialysis vendors of peripheral dialysis solutions can deliver their solutions to the foreign address so they can perform the dialysis while on holiday. This indeed permits you to continue your dialysis, but still you will need to take some breaks every day to perform the therapy many times a day. Some patients might find that cumbersome, especially if you have busy business schedules or want to enjoy the entire day out. Aesthetics, I mean physical aesthetics, are important for many patients. Fistula created for hemodialysis as a vascular access in the arm, yeah, can become lumpy occasionally. But patients can cover it with long sleeves. The tube on the tummy of patients with peritoneal dialysis will prevent some people from wearing bikinis while some bathing. If that troubles you, just buy a swimming suit, that a full swimming suit. And enjoy the sun that way. This is not a trivial consideration that must be discussed actually with your patients. Or if you're a patient, I, I discuss with my patient as well. And it's not only important for female patients, you know, males also want to look good as well. Yeah. Neither hemodialysis nor peritoneal dialysis are devoid of complications. At least in this session, I will not be exhaustive, no detail, but overall, both ther therapies, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis, are associated with bacterial infections. Hemodialysis more with viral infections because of the nature of the therapy, manipulating patients' blood outside of the body in the dialysis machine to clean it out and put it back to the body. In both types of dialysis, the access for the dialysis can be blocked as well. It could be the fistula or the graft for hemodialysis or a catheter, or the peritoneal dialysis catheter or tube for peritoneal dialysis, you know, requiring an intervention or even a surgery. Hemodialysis is also more bound to hypotensive episodes. And a messier blood pressure can result you know, in this intermittent therapy than in peritoneal dialysis patients. In addition, there can be more weight gain and worse diabetic control in patients with peritoneal dialysis because of the amount of sugar instilled into the body during the peritoneal dialysis process. 
and there can be some risk of abdominal hernias because you are increasing the abdominal pressure by putting more fluid inside the tummy, which normally we don't have that amount of fluid. And it's a bit of about many other complications. Chemodialysis tend to be a more long-lasting therapy than peritoneal dialysis, as progressive thickening of the peritoneal membrane, the one that works as a filter of the blood, can occur through time. It does not happen to all patients, but the length of use means how many years you are on this therapy, on peritoneal dialysis, and the number of complications like infections are highly associated with this thickening of the membrane. So it becomes kind of scarred, and when it's thick, you cannot clean the blood properly. If that happens, they need to be switched to hemodialysis. In most cases, there is no strong medical contraindication for any of these therapies. So in most cases, the patient can choose one or the other. As a professional, I cannot decide on behalf of my patients, but I can explain the rationality, the pros and the cons of all therapies. So they can have more elements for their decision. I maximum can weigh the options for them based on their medical condition and the, you know, until I have gained, after a detailed conversation with them, aiming to understand the preferences and priorities in life. In Francisco Clinical Medical Center, we provide empathetic, approachable, and flexible renal care, taking into account all these factors, helping our patients to choose the therapy that is more permissive of their lifestyle and the therapy that attaches better to their personality and priorities in life. If you need my help, you know how to contact me. So I wonder if there is any, any question. Let me just reply to the comment. If no question now, you can do it later on the replay. If you are in this unfortunate situation, of needing to decide between peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis, my suggestion is first, think if kidney transplantation could be an option for you. If you're healthy enough and you have someone in your family healthy and willing to give you a kidney transplant, that's the first option you should choose because kidney transplantation is way above these two therapies. If that's not your option, and you need to choose between peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis, ask your doctor if there is any contraindication for any of them. If there is no contraindication, meaning that you can choose either, do that exercise that I told you. Try to visualize your life if you were to go three times a week to the lives in a center, commute, etc., how it affect your work, social life, etc., or if you stay at home doing it on a machine, doing it every day, every day, every day, every day, with no free days, there is no right therapy. Some patients choose this one and they are content with it. I cannot say happy because, indeed. You know, going through dialysis is not an easy thing, but at least they are content with that decision, that they believe that they took the best possible decision. And other patients are totally content with peritoneal dialysis. Because every patient is different. Every patient's life and conditions, medical or personal or social, are different. And personalities are different. So people would like to do the things for themselves, don't want to, no one else to be involved. Other patients might be a little more 
you know, sit back. I prefer someone do it, especially if it's a nurse. I, I, I trust that maybe she can do it better than me. Some patients think different. So there is no right or wrong. But it's our role as doctors to try to give you all the rationality of the therapies, all the pros and cons, and maybe weigh them up according to what we see related to your medical condition or what you have told us regarding, you know, your preferences, etc. That's why communication with the doctor is very important for you to take the right decision. So I hope you find this video useful. If you find useful, please press a like, you know, uh, because that tells me that this is working. If I see no likes, so I I don't know if what I'm talking is useful. I know it's useful. <laughs> Sorry, I probably, but you know what I mean. No, I I I want to know that it's useful for you. Um, also, if you comment, some other people can uh, learn more. I'm just giving you the generalities. Or sometimes a question can trigger some other things that are important, and maybe other patients or relatives are facing it. So try to be interactive. But obviously, if you need some more specific advice, you need to discuss it with your own doctor or you need to engage me, you know, separately as your doctor. But this is a very complex topic. It's a very difficult decision. But as I mentioned, with the right guidance and support, it can be much easier and bearable. So, can go back and watch this video if you are unfortunately in this junction that you need to decide between transplant, hemodialysis, uh, hemodialysis. And if you need my help, you can contact me. So I'm Dr. Francisco wishing you the best possible therapy.